What's up guys, it's me Lego Paradise here and today I'm going to show you my Lego Deep Space Exploration Ship which has taken me several months to build. It stands at over a metre long and nearly 40 centimetres tall which makes it one of my biggest Lego creations so far. I love building Lego spaceships and to make this one extra special I've decided to motorise some of the components on board using Lego power functions. These include the boarding ramp, lights, airlock, hangar doors and even a working gun turret. I've designed the spaceship to be minifigure scale which means I've even included a fully detailed interior. Since there's so many details to see, first I'll show you the exterior and then I'll show you the interior and motorised parts. The colour scheme of the deep space exploration ship consists mainly of light and dark grey to represent a metallic body along with accents of pearl gold and sand purple bricks. Sand purple is quite a rare Lego colour that was only released in a few sets before being discontinued. So I'm really happy that I was able to include it in my spaceship because it's not a colour I often use in my creations. Using this colour has also given me the opportunity to incorporate some interesting elements such as the Lego air pumps that I used for the engines. So let's take a closer look at the front of the spaceship. This is where the main entrance is located, which can be accessed via the boarding ramp. I motorised the boarding ramp using some LEGO Technic linear actuators, which produce a really cool effect, just like the boarding ramp of the Millennium Falcon. You can get a better idea of how the boarding ramp works by looking at it from the inside, where you can see how minifigures are able to walk up onto the platform and slowly be transported up into the entrance room. I've also included some working lights in case the spaceship has to land in the dark. These are made using the official power functions lights which I positioned above the entrance so that they would illuminate the area below. The lights have the biggest impact when it is darkest as this is when they are the most visible. They even produce a really cool spotlight effect that can be seen both outside and inside the ship. Above the boarding ramp I've built a couple of reinforced windows which are strengthened with a support bar in the middle. I've designed the whole front area to appear very sturdy and durable since this part of the ship would have to withstand the most impact from collisions with asteroids or space debris. Now we'll move on to the sides of the spaceship. As you can see I've designed both sides to be pretty much identical to each other so I'll just show you one of them in more detail. At the start you can see the angular shape of the front of the ship that adds to its streamlined appearance. Next to that I've installed a pair of observation windows which are made using a couple of sand purple archways turned on their side. This cool window design was simply the result of some experimentation as I tried to figure out the best way to make use of these sand purple pieces. I've designed the next part of the wall to look like it's assembled out of modular panel sections that have been swapped around and customised to the ship's needs. The idea being that over time the spaceship's gadgets are modified by its crew to better suit their current mission. For example one of the panels includes a vent system while the other two sections consist of windows. Underneath the modular panels I've used a Lego building technique known as greebling. A design where you arrange random Lego elements in a pattern to make it look like there's a lot of detail in one area. You can also see this is the beginning of the large cooling ducts that provide cool air to the engines. This is sourced from the air intakes attached to the sides. The tubes that I use for these cooling ducts are actually official Lego pieces that came in a Life on Mars set from 2002. The middle of the spaceship is where the main hangar is located which can be accessed by opening the blast doors on either side. This is another motorised part of the ship and you can see that both sets of doors on each side open simultaneously when powered. I think this effect makes the blast doors appear really strong and heavy which is the exact feeling I was going for when building them. 
I created the mechanism that moves the doors by using a pair of linear actuators. They expand and contract to push and pull the doors into position. In addition, the blast doors on the left side of the spaceship open up to reveal a robotic grabber arm. This can be unfolded and extended to secure objects and smaller spacecraft floating in outer space. As well as function as a mini crane to transport cargo around the hangar. I've designed the grabber arm to be fully posable with individually movable fingers. To add some variety to the shape of the ship, I've made the middle flow inwards using plates stacked on top of each other to form this nice arch. You can also see how I've bent the cooling duct tubes to follow this curved shape. I thought this space below would be a great place to position a gun turret. And not just any gun turret, but a fully operational motorized one. Using a combination of bevel gears and axles, I've managed to make the turret rotate in any direction and fire an array of energy projectiles. As you can see, this comes especially handy when defending against alien attackers. After the midsection, the modular panel design continues along the walls to match the other side. Next to this is a second pair of sand purple observation windows, which provide a view into the interior of the spaceship. The bottom features a similar greebling design with a few pearl gold details visible behind the roll cage. However, unlike the front, the cooling ducts here extend into the engine compartments. Each of these massive engine compartments is made up of one of the storage boxes from the Lego Racers theme. One of the ones that unfolds into a road when opened. Instead of building the engines of the spaceship out of normal Lego bricks, I thought it would be quite cool to use some of these really unusual air pump pieces that actually came in the same set as the tubes that I used on the sides. I placed both of these air pump pieces side by side and joined them in the middle with some sand purple parts to complement the colour scheme of the model. Before I show you the rest of the back, let's take a look at the roof and the interior of the first level of the spaceship. Starting at the front of the roof are six stationary mounted cannons that are designed to provide some heavy firepower against any attacking spaceships. Behind them I've included some cooling fans. These fans spin around and provide the cannons with a circulation of cold air to keep them cool and stop them from overheating as they fire. In case the heavy cannons don't hit their target, I've included a smaller automated blaster in the center to act as backup. This smaller blaster is able to move up and down as well as rotate 360 degrees on top of an upside down satellite dish piece. Further along you can see an exposed bit of internal structure of the spaceship, which I backed with black tiles to create the illusion that there's a large opening beneath it. Moving along the top, I've embedded two cargo containers in the middle of the roof. They serve the purpose of transporting long-term supplies that the crew wouldn't need to access until they reach their destination. The next section of the roof, above the middle of the spaceship, is equipped with another cannon. This weapon is operated by a crew member who can be seen at the controls if you lift the gun up. Finally, the last compartment on the roof is home to a little repair drone that can fly out and conduct on-the-go maintenance and repairs to the spaceship. And if any of you have played LEGO Dimensions, you might have noticed that my design of the repair drone is inspired by the robot from the game.
Now we're going to take a look at the interior of the first floor. As you enter through the boarding ramp, the first room you step into is the main entrance, which doubles as the ship's cargo bay and airlock. When I built the airlock door, I was left with quite a large area in front of it, so I thought I'd use it for the ship's main cargo storage, full of various types of containers and cargo. To the right of the airlock, you can see four gas canisters, packed together, along with a few spare missiles and some storage crates. On the opposite side, I've placed a box of radioactive crystals, next to some tools and equipment used to handle the cargo. Towards the back of the cargo bay, there are some more containers as well as a portable generator that the crew can take with them on expeditions. I've included one more motorized feature here, which is the airlock. Unlike the other slow moving doors and ramps on board the spaceship, the airlock needs to lock into place quickly in order to stabilize the oxygen levels in the room. I've achieved this effect by using a rubber band attached to the hinge of the airlock which pulls the door open whenever the motor on the other side is powered. And in case you're wondering, the design of the airlock and the section leading up to it was inspired by entrances to vaults in the Fallout games. And to make the airlock door more realistic, I've included a handle on the door so that the minifigures can open it. Now, as we head through the airlock, we arrive at the beginning of the main corridor that connects each of the rooms of the spaceship. To the left is the spacesuit storage. The suits can be accessed by unlocking them through the control panel in the middle. I wanted to make these spacesuits look very heavy duty so that they would be able to function when spacewalking in dangerous conditions. Conveniently located next to the spacesuit storage are some lockers for the crew to store their personal possessions while they're out spacewalking. I added a printed map piece in between the lockers to represent a computer that can keep track of the ship's inventory and keep a log of all the items going in and out of the lockers. Each of the rooms along the corridor are protected by metal bulkheads, similar to the doors found on real life sailing ships. Opposite the lockers is a dormitory one of the sleeping and social areas for the crew. In here I've included a bunk bed along with some of the crew's personal belongings such as a guitar and a poster. The other side of the room is taken up by a desk with a recreational computer terminal. The area next door is occupied by the medical bay. This room includes a couple of medicine cabinets, an emergency first aid kit on the wall, and an operating table with an x-ray of a patient. I've built a small window into this wall to allow visitors to check up on the recovery of their fellow crew members even while the doctor is operating on them. As with the spacesuit storage, I've carefully considered the location of the medical bay to be situated close to the airlock to provide easy access to the entrance of the spaceship. Across the corridor is the bathroom, another essential room in any spaceship. The bathroom features all of the basic fixtures, such as a toilet with a roll of toilet paper hanging off to the side, a sink, and a shower with an opening door. At the back, I've disguised the motor that powers the airlock by hiding it underneath some extra cargo containers that I've strapped to the top and are secured in place with a rope. These cargo containers really help to emphasize how valuable space is aboard the ship since all of the available space for storage has already been used up. So this means things like extra cargo have to be stored wherever there is room. The door at the end of the corridor serves as an entrance to the hangar area and also doubles as an airlock when the hangar doors are open. In the hangar you can see a bit more of the technic mechanism for the doors and turret as well as some purely decorative details such as the valve and gas canisters. To make the hangar more interesting I've decorated the floor with some yellow hazard markings near the edges of the doors 
as well as added a control panel and radiator to one of the walls. In front of the other wall, you can see an engineer operating the controls of the giant robotic grabber arm. I've positioned these controls so that the person using them would have a clear view of the grabber arm while they operate it. Connected to the other side of the hangar is the next set of rooms, which include the kitchen, laboratory, server room and communications area. The kitchen is equipped with every utensil you need for a long space journey, together with lots of places to store the food and equipment. The window behind the kitchen allows the chef to let his colleagues in the laboratory know when the food is ready. There's also a communication area nearby with radio and surveillance equipment. Opposite the kitchen is the onboard science laboratory, and this is where a variety of experiments are carried out. The lab includes a research computer and a chemistry set on top of a table which is a modified design of the one from my old LEGO Space Mothership. You can see one of the scientists is currently experimenting with an unknown alien substance. Inside the laboratory is another small room which holds the servers containing in the mainframe, the spaceship central processing unit. The mainframe can be accessed through the wall mounted terminal on the other side. I'm really happy with the design of the server rack, which I created using a combination of clip plates, bar pieces and printed tiles. I also decided to leave one of the Power Functions motor cables on the floor to create the appearance of a computer cable, which really adds to the server room feeling that I was going for. The next area is one of the biggest rooms within the spaceship as this is the main meeting area where the crew can plan missions, discuss strategic plans and eat their meals. At the moment the meeting table is occupied by an off-duty engineer having a drink and a scientist browsing a tablet computer. In the centre of this room are the stairs to the next floor of the spaceship which we will take a look at after we've seen the rest of the interior. I've built this staircase on top of a trap door that can be lifted to reveal a secret compartment which holds the battery box that powers all of the motorised parts of the ship. This is how I turn on the power to the motors using the built in switch. On either side of the room I've added some experimental plants that are being grown for food inside special glass greenhouses. At the very end of the spaceship is the workshop and engine room. The workshop is actually an entire level lower than the rest of the first floor, so I've included a staircase that winds down the side of the room. There's also another bunk bed for the mechanics on duty overnight. The workshop contains an assortment of different tools and equipment that the mechanics use to repair and maintain the various systems on board the spaceship. Most of the repairs are carried out in this workshop area, which is why I've included a pair of workbenches. One to hold all of the spare components, and one to store tools. In between them is another backup generator with a similar design to the one in the cargo bay, which the mechanics can use to test electrical items such as the circuit board which has been restored at the moment. Lowering this room has also allowed me to include a massive futuristic generator that spins around to create power that is supplied directly to the engines. When looking at this section from above, I think the generator looks like it fits really well and that it was designed alongside the engines in the first place. And you can see I've used some transparent blue cylinders in the middle to simulate the electricity. Now let's head back up the stairs into the command bridge. At the front you can see the captain giving commands to the pilot to take the spaceship to the next destination of their expedition. The pilot is surrounded by the complex controls of the spaceship which wrap around both of the seats 
giving the pilot a clear overview of all the controls. The comfy pilot chairs can also spin around for ease of access. The sides of the command bridge are installed with additional control panels that monitor and display the status of various internal and external systems. The back of the command bridge is home to the ship's armory, which is tightly guarded by a security officer. This is where all of the crew's weapons are kept, which include some long and medium range rifles over on the left, as well as some pistols and a harpoon gun on the wall to the right. Next to the guard is another heavy duty door, and on each side of the door there are some air vents that provide access to the, some of the plumbing systems. These small maintenance areas were inspired by the interiors of spaceships in the Alien movies which included many small vents and tunnels where the crew could hide in an emergency. You can see one of these vents being worked on right now. The command bridge section can be removed to reveal the brass pipes that make up the spaceship's plumbing system. When I built this part of the ship, I was left with two empty areas on either side of the room, so instead of wasting the space, I used it to create this interesting cutaway view. One side contains a couple of water filters, while the other side contains a tap that I've integrated into the rest of the pipe network. The next room in the middle is responsible for oxygen production. This is done by separating the molecules of water visible in the tanks into hydrogen and oxygen. Behind the tanks, I've attached some exposed pipes to the walls to transport liquids and gas across the room. These pipes continue on the other wall where you can see a gauge displaying the current water pressure. At the back of the room, there's a small viewing balcony which provides the crew with an overview of the engines. Finally, let's take a look at the third floor of the Deep Space Exploration Ship. This floor mainly consists of the Captain's Quarters, which is furnished with a simple desk, complete with a radio, deck of cards and office chair. The windows in the middle of the room give the Captain a perfect view of the command bridge, as well as out into space. The other side features a cosy bed that sits atop a pair of air ducts. I've built another maintenance vent at the back of the captain's quarters that provides access to the escape pod release mechanism on the other side. This is built in the same style as the maintenance vents downstairs, except for the release mechanism at the back, which I've designed to look like a complex system that is capable of quickly ejecting the escape pod away from the ship. Now let's take a look at the exterior of the command bridge, captain's quarters and oxygen generation room. The walls around the front follow the curve shape of the windscreen until this design is broken up by the support pillars that reinforce the walls and are evenly spaced along the sides. This support structure continues up to the next level where I've curved the top half of the windscreen inwards to be a bit more aerodynamic. At the very top of the spaceship, I've added another pair of automated blasters to provide defence for this area of the ship. Behind the blasters, there's an array of various satellite dishes and radars that make up the communication system. These are positioned unobstructed at the highest point of the spaceship for the best signal and are protected by metal railings. The exterior of the oxygen generation room features identical water and gas tanks one built into each side of the spaceship. At the back, there is a window into the oxygen room 
which I made using an unusual piece that is normally used as the back of a Lego pirate ship. For extra security, I've included another two guns that protect the engines of the spaceship. These are mounted on a ball joint to allow them to rotate at many different angles. The final section of my deep space exploration ship is the escape pod launch area. The crew can access the escape pod through the ladder that extends down to the oxygen room. In emergencies, this ladder can be pulled up to seal the door of the pod so that it can be fired out into space. The rest of this top area provides support for the launch mechanism to ensure that the escape pod is ejected from the ship in time. The escape pod is designed to be very tough and sturdy to withstand the forces of space travel. The front of the pod includes a round porthole window that can be popped out if necessary to provide an emergency exit. I've protected the observation windows on each side with some ladders that also form part of a roll cage. The back is made out of the lower half of a Lego hot air balloon and is equipped with four boosters that can steer the pod in any direction. The interior of the escape pod has four seats that are equipped with safety harnesses. You can see one of the astronauts is already strapped in. The wall features some supplies and provisions that the crew can survive on when they land on another planet as well as a radio for communication and a flare gun to signal for help. I thought it'd also be interesting to show you the custom built power functions remote control that I use to operate all of the motorized parts of the spaceship. You can see this controller is made up of several smaller controllers joined together with Technic pins. I've also used some decorated tiles to show what each part controls. For example, the boarding ramp is represented by a single line. The round airlock door is shown as a circle. The two hangar doors are a pair of vertical lines and the motorized gun turret controls are spelt out with some printed letter tiles. So now you've seen all of my deep space exploration ship in detail and you can let me know what your favourite part was in the comments section below. This spaceship took a really long time to build probably the most time I've spent on a single Lego creation, so I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and shared it to your family and friends. I'll see you guys next time with some more Lego creations. Thanks for watching.